hello good day distinguished audience you are welcome to digital being free podcast actually i was planning an amazing topic to talk for today but i'm like we need to get into let's have a chat again with digital being free and we are going to be talking about what's been happening in march yeah because we need to have that discussion so actually um what's been happening in march i think uh, march has been march has just been there honestly we are in the 18th week of march and i can tell you that everywhere is just there um it's just there like it's it, i won't say it's boring i won't say it's dry i would just say it's just there then i think the most important segment of this chat is, is to rant about the issue of network like i was not expecting this network breakout at all it went on for like a couple of weeks I could not believe it. At a point, I was thinking maybe it's my phone network. Until I got this um, message from MTN. I'm not even trying to sponsor MTN, but yeah, I'm an MTN user. When I got the um, message from MTN, I was just wondering like, of all because mtn is known for their credibility mtn is known for their usability because they they have one of the most highest number of users so i was just wondering like how is it possible for mtn to have a breakout and then all of a sudden i also heard that it's no longer mtn it is now Alta it is a lot the only um network that was still standing strong that people were talking about people were reviewing is glow which is owned by mark adenuga a nigerian um, founder so any other person they're like absurdize who own this company but at the end of the day the network has been restored back but we hope we don't have this old back and forth because i could never subscribe for my solar i was like so grateful we had electricity who had to um you know keep us going in regards to the network issue at least i could experience light to charge my phone because it would have been terrible it would have been so terrible to have an internet breakdown and electric oh god that's that would be the worst nightmare for everyone especially people who are into digital businesses or even people who are into other businesses but for me as a digital business entrepreneur i was so upset i had a client that was about to finalize his management and i was explaining to him the network is terrible but i don't make excuses to work i will try as much as possible to do this design the the client was like oh no you have to design different um designs you have to put in different factors i said hello sir did you hear what i just said i just said that the network is having issue and I cannot do all those different things you're talking about. I can only do one design with one write-up. Of course, I usually do duplicate designs so that they can have more enough of that exact design with the same write-up and choose the one they want. You know, I just have to find a way to make it happen. And then after I did that, the man was trying to do English wahala. You know, in English, we have this is special day. This is a special day. Now, in in dictionary meaning from my research, they actually said that this is special day is correct. And this is a special day is correct. Like when you want to pronounce this is special moment. This is special moment. This is a special moment. Most of the time, we are all used to adding a to 
a special moment but at times it's never needed sometimes the right phrase is this is special day this is special moment so i expect that it was but it was like no 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 it has to be i said sir i i think you already know i'm not going to redesign because i've already explained before that the network issue is terrible and if you want to maybe you should come up with your design go do it pre, um, pop, um you know export it out and use it but i'm not gonna use i'm not gonna redesign with this whole um network issue and all anyway the management is over and yeah then i feel like this period of march is like a period of setting boundaries because especially with customers because inflation is affecting everyone and you thinking that you are the only one inflation is affecting is a no no inflation is affecting me is affecting you is affecting everyone so in a situation where the customer comes to meet you I said, oh, I want to make inquiry of the services. How much are you going to do this? I experienced some co- some prospective customers telling me this is the amount that they can afford. And it's like the same figure. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I cannot. I know the word of the services. So if you feel that I'm going to do these services for you for that amount, then you are joking. Because I know what this word of these services is. So many of you people disrespect the word of our services, but I will not allow you to. Whoever that needs the services will pay for it. One of the reasons why I'm beginning to understand that in businesses, you need to add value to your services. Do not ever allow anyone to disrespect your value. We see people charging huge amount of money and people are paying. Are you saying they have two heads or are you saying they have three heads? And these people are rich, super rich. I don't want to mention their names, but I think we know some people who charge some high amount of money for some different products or different services. So it's possible as a business owner to charge and see people pay if they need it. If they are desperate to have it. You understand? So I feel yeah, it's it's very important to set boundaries, even in friendship, even in family, it's it's very important to set boundaries and, and this period of 2024 it's not like the dream kind of stuff that everybody is like oh this is you know it's it's just there like it's really there but though i had a reflection and said there are people who are really living their best life and (laughs) you are just in one corner and you think oh everything is just there there's some people who don't even know what you're saying they're really having fun they're enjoying life they're eating beautiful amazing food that you have never seen drinking things that you have never drank going to places that you have never gone to so i feel it's important that why we are trying to talk about the bad side of this year or this month we can also talk about the good side they are definitely good side especially for those who reside in nigeria they're definitely good side me i just like to see the good in everything but now i'm beginning to learn to see the bad in things not like generally but like in people so if i'm ever going to advise anyone in relationship it's you need to be very careful of who you go into a relationship with. I think I got I, I watched a story of um, a young lady who was at the age of committing suicide, like she drank hypo. I think I saw that on um, Twitter, and um, the person said they had to remove whatever she drank, they had to force her to, you know. Because trust me, relationship is not that easy to, to, to come out of, especially when you genuinely love the person. And the one that even pissed me off was when I was reading the comment 
people were saying she might be the toxic one. People were saying she may be the one who made the religion. And I'm like, you, people just make wrong assumptions about things. And I feel it's important people should stop assuming about people's life if they didn't tell you what is going on in their lives. Why would you go in the comment section and start assuming things about somebody you don't even know? She had an emotional breakdown because of the relationship she walked into. I've been in a phase when I love when I love someone. I was almost like really suicidal about it. I was so depressed. I was ready to lose my life for this person, but unfortunately, it never did work out. And it's like this person, it doesn't even value me. All this person doesn't even care about me. All this person doesn't even um, respect me. And it's very, very like, you know, when you meet somebody and they tell you, oh, you should, um, you should, you should not do this because they don't like it. And then you see them doing the exact opposite of it. That is how my relationship was. At a point, I had to like, had a final say in, in the breakup relationship. I had to tell him, you have been very manipulative. You have been very toxic. You have not been the best partner. You have been worse. You made me do what I do not want to do. And I need you to know that. I also, you know, tell the person, you are going straight to hell for the traumatic experience you made me go through. How can you want to be in a relationship with a woman telling her that she needs to call you your husband because being your telling her that she needs to call you your husband is affirmating that definitely you guys are going to spend the rest of your life together and then I call this person my husband for 8 good months and at the end of the relationship he wasn't my husband now can you imagine the manipulation I have gone through for this man and I have never for once seen his family and I have never for once known who the fuck I was in a relationship with the who the fuck I was in marriage is even more interesting on TikTok but who the fuck was I in a relationship with I never knew who I was in a relationship with. And the funny part was, I went to social media because it seems to be like too religious about things. It has a church it goes to. And then I realized he is never following his church account. Neither is he following any church um, relative, gospel relative platforms. What is following is worldly things. Imagine telling somebody to not do worldly things. I do not follow most of all the celebrities. I do not follow all the TikTok influencers. You being someone who I find very old and very matured, you are doing the exact opposite of it. You are following these people and not just that alone, you are following them and you are talking about not following worldly people, not listening to worldly things and you are doing the exact opposite of it. You told me to not post my pictures and my videos because you feel that is not the qualities of a leader. But you are following women who are doing the exact thing I was doing then. Can I tell you the most interesting thing? I would ever advise anyone in relationship to look out for. Is to never 
ever, ever be in a relationship with a manipulative person. We call these kinds of people narcissists. A narcissist would always feel they are right. They would never act like they are wrong. Even when they are wrong, they sugarcoat it and make themselves feel right. Is that crazy? You don't deserve a narcissist. If I had gone through eight months of a narcissistic man, I can tell you how to identify them. But this is not going to be the conversation of how to identify a narcissistic man. This is just a chit chat of what I went through and what I experienced. I saw this person as someone I could work with, I could build with, I could do a lot of things with this person, but I realized he was the one who didn't see that in me. He never saw the wifely qualities in me. He made me feel like I I didn't have it. He made me add low self-esteem. And it was such a terrible person. He had his good quality. I am not coming on this podcast space to talk about, oh, he's a bad person. No, it's a very good person. It's generous. He could be kind. He could be a good listener. But at the same time, when you go into a relationship, point out your vulnerability on someone. And they use your vulnerability to despite you. That is a narcissist. So, I will tell you this. Be very careful of narcissists. They come in with soft and gentle words. But they never involve you in their life. They tell you they are going to do this for you. They See, I went through a process where he showed me things like homes we are going to live in and motor trucks we are going to use but it was never implemented in action and when I was listening to who the fuck was I in a marriage with I could like face like two or two out of who was I who the fuck was I in a relationship with I'm like oh god I was with someone who has been manipulative to me for too long did I love him? yes Did I wish he would have changed? Yes. Did I wish he would have apologized? Yes. Did I wish he would have done the right thing? Yes. And I would tell people, be with someone who allows you to be yourself. Not someone who allows you to be a different version of who you do not even know. I also found that he had some of his ex pictures on his social media and he never deleted it. And in my mind, I'm like, you're supposed to have deleted your ex picture. I do not have any of my ex picture on my phone. Being a narcissistic person, he was like making it look all good and say, oh, Facebook does this reminder. Facebook does this. Facebook putting all the excuses on Facebook. Perhaps you could just go to your media file and delete the picture. So, I never met his children, I never met his family, I never met his, you know, because he was a divorcee, so I never met, you know, those people. It was like I was entirely in a relationship by myself. I feel so much pain because I knew for that eight month, I would have married someone, I would have met someone much better and even younger and I would not go through the hell I went through you know I had to go through self-healing I had someone who I was talking to as a friend and it was also helping but at the point I I just needed to help myself I cried I laughed and I reflect and I want to use my pain to tell people you need to be very careful 
of time wasters. I've been through a lot of time wasters in my relationship. It never worked out. And if there's anything I've, I, want, I want to ever tell anyone is you find yourself in love situations when a man comes to meet you telling you they like you, they want to be with you, especially someone who is very intentional and very serious, never let go of that man. It doesn't matter if he doesn't look that 100% attractive, it doesn't matter if he doesn't have everything you want, but with time, all of those things can happen. At times you feel like, oh, I don't feel this attraction for this person, and I don't feel if I marry this person, it's gonna, it could end up you loving that person because time is going, and a lot of women get older, and we see some women in their thirties or their late thirties, they have no one to spend the rest of their life with because they were too picky. It's important to not be too picky. There are men who are so attractive, like the one I'm talking about with the nurses. Very attractive man. He's older, but he looks younger. But he's a narcissist. And I told him right to his face. So, attraction isn't the most important in relationship. Yes, you want to have beautiful children, but that does not mean that someone who is not physically good-looking to some point would give you ugly children. No, you might have beautiful children out of it. You need somebody who would love you and understand you and never make you feel worse. And even when they do something terrible, they would always acknowledge that they are sorry, not being manipulative about it. So this chit chat is something that I feel I want to have a chit chat with audiences who could connect with what I went through and learn from it and I'm also learning from it it's just that they get to a point in your life you don't just want to be learning everything in relationship every now and then you really want it to happen the marriage the family you want it to happen I see a lot of people like my colleague I know someone who got married I know people who got married and I'm happy for them and I know God's time is the best even in career you know, when you get to a point of your career, you feel it's not all good and all going. You know, you, you don't have your office space, you don't have your vehicle, you know, you don't have some of the properties over there and all. But I believe everything is time. God's time is the best. I believe in God. I trust in God. My spiritual connection with God is so deep. And I know that God loves me. God loves you. And just keep doing your thing. So thank you to everyone who have listened to this podcast from the beginning to the end, from me ranting on the network, and from me talking about different things. And um, yeah, but before we end this podcast, I'll be talking about the brand that I'm managing, Phone Chaser Express Limited. They are a logistic brand who are specialized in import and cargo and vehicles and exported. They also do custom clearances, they do air fry, they do ocean fry, they do transport station logistics and they are reliable. They are people you can work with. So to go check them out, make sure you visit them on their social media platform at Phone Chaser Express Limited, at Phone Chaser Express Limited. And if you would like to be a guest on my podcast, you already know it that you are going to pay for it. And if you would like to also put out your business on my podcast, don't forget to reach out to me, call or WhatsApp me, plus 234-814-748-0036. And I will put out my website so that you could go check it out to see my profile and to see my number and other information about me thank you once again for following me and staying until the end and i'll see you guys in april okay bye